As you open the box, you'll see the consumer unit. Firstly, remove the front cover and door assembly and then extract the chassis from the back box. You will see there is an accessory pack. This contains a cable protector plate for the rear knockouts, some grommet strip and wing nuts for later. If you remove the back box, as it's the first thing to be installed, all of the other components can go back in the box to be kept safe from damage until they are needed later. Before installing a flush consumer unit, we need to understand how deep into the wall the back box needs to be. The top and bottom edges are 60mm deep. These need to be no further forward than flush with the stud work. The side edges are 65mm deep. These raised edges allow you to have an edge to work up to with the plasterboard. There are knockouts on the top, bottom, sides and rear of the enclosure. This facilitates cable entry for many different installations. The cable entries at the top and the bottom of the back box leave you a knockout which can be protected by either using the included grommet strip or a 38mm open grommet. The rear cable entry edges are protected using the cable protector plate which is supplied with the board. Simply cut out the sections of the plate where you would like to bring the cables through and clip the plate into the aperture left by the knockout. To comply with part M of the building regulations which states that the main switch should be 1400mm from the finished floor height plus or minus 50mm the bottom of the back box must be installed at 13-20mm from the floor, plus or minus 50mm. As long as the top and the bottom edges do not protrude forwards of the stud work, the board will be able to be installed effectively. Once you've got the height and depth right, use the slots on the inside edges to fix screws into the woodwork, securing the back box in place. It's worth checking at this point that the top and bottom edge don't protrude forwards of the stud work as this will mean the board will be too far out of the wall when the cover is fitted. The top and bottom edges can sit up to 20mm back from the stud work and the enclosure will still be able to be fitted. When you return to the installation after the boarding has been finished you simply remove any building debris from inside the enclosure and then use your wing nuts from your accessory bag, put them on a couple of turns onto the stud and then reintroduce the chassis. If you pull the cables above the din rail through the opening in the chassis and locate the chassis on the four studs, push in until the return edges are flush with the front of the plasterboard and tighten the wing nuts. On the flush units, we have included the cable clamp to ensure that the meter tails are held tight and secure. Remember, you must ensure to follow the torque settings in the instructions leaflet for all of the connections within the consumer unit, including the manufacturer's connections. It is important to our customers that the Design 50 can be lockable when it's being fitted on site. To accomplish this, the locking bracket can be fitted as shown. This simple solution can be fitted and removed without the requirement to isolate the board to remove the cover. Once the locking bracket is removed, there is no hole left to plug. 